Good morning. My name is Pastor Jesse. Welcome to worship today, this Easter Sunday. We are happy you are here. We are celebrating the risen Christ this morning together. Uh, we're going to sing. We're going to hear the resurrection story. We'll uh, spend some time in, in word and in music, and we will go out in peace on this day that uh, Christ is risen. Our opening hymn is Up from the Grave He Arose. Uh, we'll have the words up on the screen and we'll sing through it and then uh, we'll come back and we'll have a, a children's message as well. Let's worship the living God this morning. Hey kids, um, so today I'm in a closet here at my house. It's a little dark. It's a little, little empty. But I thought it was a really good place for me to be because in the Bible when that we're reading today, Jesus, who, who died on Friday, he was resurrected. He came back to life. And it says that when the women who went to see him, who went to, to prepare him for, for his funeral, it says when they got there, the tomb was empty. The closet was empty and, and he wasn't there. Now, because of how dark it is, I, I brought something with me. Um, this is a glow stick. Now, when you get a little older, and if you come to youth group or to confirmation, uh, we, we play with glow sticks a lot at the church. We, we play a lot of games with, with glow sticks at the church. And um, I was looking at the glow sticks as I'm planning for, for youth group. And I was thinking about the glow stick because what I like about the glow stick is it's, it's pretty fragile, right? But if you, if you break it, if you break it, then the liquid inside 
reacts and changes color and then it, it gets pretty bright. I'm gonna close the door a little bit more so you can see how bright this glow stick gets. When, when, when you break a glow stick, at, at first I'm always afraid that I'm gonna break it open and that the liquid's gonna spill out, but when you break it, then it starts to produce light. And I think that's kind of like what happened with the tomb with Jesus, that, that when he died, as it was very sad and very scary but then he came out and and was he came out and and started to produce more and more light he he came out of the tomb and and was brought back from the dead and and he started to make light and and the light was so bright that that you and I today 2000 years later are still shining because of Jesus we still are shining because of his light and we have to go out into the world and tell people about it. We have to go out into the world and, and tell people about how bright and how awesome Jesus is and how much he loves us and how much he wants us to be good people. That we have to leave the closet and leave the tomb and go out into the world and with Jesus' light go out and, and tell people that they are loved by God. And that the light is so bright that we can't help but love Jesus. And so, even in the closet, even with the doors closed or almost closed, with a glow stick or with the light of Jesus, we can still see our way. Now, if you don't have a glow stick at home, ask your grown-up to, to let me know, and I'll come over and drop off a couple of glow sticks so you can, you can break one and, and see how bright it is. And that you can remember that Jesus is, is bright and is amazing and loves you. And because he lives, we don't have to be afraid anymore. Because he lives, it's like we have a glow stick when we come into a dark closet. Because he lives, we can go out and tell everyone else about Jesus Christ. So let's pray, and then uh, we're going to go back and we're going to sing a little bit, okay? Hey God, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for even as scary as when Jesus died, it was that that we know that he lives. We know that he got out of the tomb and lived and that he lives with us, that he walks with us, that he loves us and knows us and, and wants us to live better lives. He wants us to, to live lives in the light, not in the darkness. And so God, help us to be good people. Help us to spread the light of Jesus. Help us to to tell other people about Jesus, that they may know you as well. Thank you, God. We love you. Amen. Amen. Have a good week, kids. I'll see you soon. Happy Easter.
Luke 24, 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spice that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look from, for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you. While he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be cru crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told them to the apostles. But they did not believe them, woman, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Amen. Friends, let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. Amen. Amen. In Confirmation this year, we've we've uh, been meeting. We're about our halfway point through Confirmation. Throughout Confirmation, we've been walking around a central question. We've been walking around a, a central, specific question that was actually asked by our youth, by our students and confirmands. And it's guided all of our conversations and all of our lessons all throughout confirmation and will continue to guide us as we move forward. The question is, what does it mean to be a Christian in the 21st century? And specifically for, for our confirmants and our teenagers, what does it mean to be a teenager who is a Christian in the 21st century? What does it mean to be a teenager who is a Christian in 2021? What does it mean for us to use our Bibles and to learn from our Bibles and, and to let our Bibles teach us how to live and to learn these stories and to be a follower of Jesus Christ in a country that is following Jesus less and less every year? How does the resurrection of Jesus inform our lives and how do we live lives changed by the resurrection? And I think this question, while yes, it is guiding us throughout confirmation, I think this question has also been guiding us during my sermons and during our Bible studies. I think this question is valid for each and every one of us. How are we meant to live as Christians in the 21st century? How are we changed by the resurrection? How should we live because of the resurrection? How should we live because of the empty tomb? How are we changed by the truth of Jesus Christ, by the wonderful news of the resurrection and the knowledge that he lives? How are we changed even today if this is the 20th or 30th or 40th Easter that we've been here and we've heard this story? On, on Good Friday, I uh, recorded our Tenenbury service, our are the service of shadows, and for the Good Friday service, I was inside of our sanctuary. On Good Friday, I was inside of that room, and I stood there surrounded by cement and cinder blocks and dust and dirt and, and scaffolding and exposed wires. I was, I was standing in that room surrounded by the brokenness of our sanctuary, and I read aloud Jesus' passion, and, and I read aloud the story from the book of John of his trial, his sentencing, his execution on that cross, and then his burial in the tomb. Friends, I've read that story many times, both as a pastor and as a Christian, and I never read that story and come out unchanged. I never read that story and cannot be moved. I never read that story and, and don't find something new that changes my life once more. 
And this year, as I was standing alone, as I was reading alone, standing in that room, surrounded by the cinder block and the scaffolding, surrounded by dust and echoes, I remember as I was reading Pilate's questioning of Jesus, as I was reading Pilate questioning who Jesus was and why the religious authorities had handed him over, in verse 37, Pilate says, you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone who is on the side of truth listens to me. And then Pilate replies with a very simple question. In verse 38, he says, what is truth? What is truth? And I think, I think that question, as equal to the ones that the confirmands asked, is a question that is as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago when Pilate asked it. What is truth? In the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of a health and economical emergency, we still, unfortunately, still have to ask ourselves this question, what is truth? truth. In a world where we have to wade through fake news and false narratives, in a world where we are pitted against one another, in a world where trust and authority are questioned, in a world where violence and bigotry and hatred have taken place of camaraderie and fellowship and trust, in a world where brother and sister, parents and children are torn apart, in a world where conspiracy theorists and or conspiracy theories and social media has pitted us against one another, we are standing on the edge of a cliff, and maybe some of us are starting to be pushed off. And so we have to ask this question, what is truth? And what does it mean to be a Christian in 2021? I wonder if the disciples had asked themselves the same thing on Good Friday after Jesus died on the cross and during Holy Saturday, that that period of mourning and vigil, I wonder if they were asking themselves similar questions. Their Lord and Savior, their teacher and their rabbi and their friend had been murdered by the government, had been lynched by the religious authorities. He had been crucified and died and was buried. And maybe they were asking themselves, what is truth? Were they remembering his words and his teachings? Were they remembering the ways he healed and raised others from the dead? Were they remembering the kingdom of heaven and the lessons that he taught and preached and the way he said that the world would be flipped on its head, that the power dynamics would no longer be the same, that justice would rule the day? And were they asking themselves, how, how could he have died? I also wonder if they were asking themselves, what does this mean to be disciples? What does this mean to be followers of Jesus? Are we next? Are there soldiers coming here to kill us? Are the religious authorities coming here to silence us? What does it mean to be a Christian? Luke tells us that early in the morning, the women came to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and, and others who were with them, they came to the tomb to prepare his body for burial. And as they reached the tomb, they saw that it was empty, and they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And then two men, in clothes that gleamed like lightning, stood beside them and asked, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you look for Jesus in a tomb? He is not here. He has risen. Go and tell the others. And so now these women... These women were the first witnesses to the resurrection. These women were the first witnesses to the truth. These women were the first preachers of the gospel, the first, the first evangelists and missionaries. These women know the truth that is still preached even 2,000 years ago today, that the tomb could not hold Jesus, that death has no power over him, and that because he lives, we also will live. 
And so the women go and they, they go to the others. They go to the men. They tell them that Jesus has risen and the others do not believe them. The others do not believe them and they ask themselves, is this true? They ask themselves, what is truth? They ask themselves, how in the world is this possible? And so Peter gets up, he runs to the tomb and finally sees the truth with his own eyes. Friends, it is hard to read this story and not be changed. How are we changed by the resurrection? How should we act as Christians in 2021? How can we bear witness to the resurrection? How can we live in a world with so much violence and bigotry and hate and anger and lies and deception? How can we bear it? I love, I love the hymns in our hymnal. I love one of the hymns that, that we're going to sing today. It's because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, life is worth the living just because he lives. Maybe one Sunday when we're not recording and there's not a camera and a microphone, maybe I'll sing in front of you all. Um, but maybe not. Maybe not today. I'm, I'm not a. I'm not a singer in the praise band. Um, my my voice is nowhere near as good as theirs is. Because he lives, we also live. Because he lives, he has conquered sin and death once and forever for each and every one of us. Because he lives, he stands for justice and righteousness. Because he lives, we must stand for justice and righteousness purely because he has told us to. Purely because he lives. He lives, and so our lives have been changed and will be changed and must be changed. Because he lives, each and every person on earth is loved and named and claimed by God, and he will never abandon us. Even in a pandemic, even if truth is seemingly lost, even if hope has been, has been pushed out of the public square, I know that my Savior lives, and because he lives, truth and hope and and love and peace are possible. And because he lives, they are all possible through me and through you and through each and every person in this world. It's possible for you and for me and every person on the street to go out and share the truth and hope and love and peace of Jesus Christ. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Friends, how will you be changed by the resurrection this morning? How will you be a Christian in the 21st century? How will you be witness to the truth? How will you bear witness to who Jesus Christ is in your lives? Who? How will you stand for truth and justice and peace? How will you go out changed by the resurrection and preach the good news? Go. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, when your son died on that cross, when your son went to Calvary, Lord, it felt like hope had been vanquished, that hope had been conquered. But we know because the tomb is empty, we know that sin and death instead have been conquered, that we have been freed from our slavery to sin and to death, that we have been freed to lives that are life-giving, that we have been freed to lives that are full of light, that just like these glow sticks, that we may go out into a world and shine brightly because you have risen your son, because your son lives we can face tomorrow because he lives. We can go out into the world and change the world because he lives. All fear is gone because he lives. We must stand up. And so Lord, give us that strength. Give us that sure assurance that comes from the knowledge that our savior lives and that the world has changed forever. Lord, give us that strength that we may go out into the world and change the world. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came and lived and died but was resurrected to teach us how to live, just as he taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Amen. Friends, he is risen, and it is a glorious day. As we go out in song, uh, we have a few announcements, and then um, we'll, I'll bless us out, and we'll go out in song with the knowledge that our Savior lives. There's no coffee hour today. There's no confirmation today or youth group. Um, it is Easter. Uh, celebrate with your families, either remotely or in person safely. Uh, we are having Bible study on Wednesday. It's on Zoom at 7 o'clock or 7.30, excuse me. Um, the information is down below. All are welcome to join us, um, especially as we uh, discuss the resurrection and how we are moving forward. 
Um, if you need help getting a vaccine, if you know of someone who needs help, even if they're not members of the church, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to help and love to find ways to connect to one another, um, to, to find vaccines, to offer rides, to, uh, to help uh, set up or organize or help with the technology, anything that is needed. Um, we have a lot of volunteers who, who uh, would love to help and get everyone who, who wishes to, have a, to, to receive a vaccine to be vaccinated. Um, so please reach out to us. Uh, finally, friends, uh, for those who remain faithful in your tithes and offerings, thank you. Um, the church is ready for a new year of ministry. Um, if you can remain faithful in your tithes and offerings, if you wish to give a gift today, uh, you can find all the information at marltonumc.com slash give. Uh, we have a new giving platform uh, which can receive recurring donations or one-time donations and directed donations. Um, any way that uh, and, and any amount that you can give will help the church figure out how to do ministry um, in 2021, how to be Christians in 2021, how to stand up as Methodists in 2021 and say, this is how we're standing for justice and for righteousness. Um, so again, you can uh, donate online at marltonumc.com slash give. Finally, friends, hear this benediction as we go out in song. With renewed hope, we walk and live and breathe. God is not dead. He is alive. Let us carry this hope to the world. Our God is not dead. He is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you soon.
Happy Easter, everyone. Bye.